Riding with Paddle TV with another in-depth, unbiased gear review. In this video, we're looking at a very different type of product. When you're getting into paddling, one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is, do I want a kayak or a canoe? And I've got a video about that very question. And so I'll leave a link in the description box down below if that's the question you're trying to answer. But one of the next questions you have to ask yourself is, do I want or can I even have a full size hard shell kayak or canoe or do I want an inflatable or a portable kayak or canoe? Now, there's lots of portable kayaks on the market, but there aren't nearly as many portable canoes. In fact, I've never tried a portable canoe before, but that's gonna change today because today I am testing my first inflatable canoe. This is the Sea Eagle Travel Canoe. The Sea Eagle Travel Canoe retails for 1,800 to 2,000 US dollars, depending on the package. It's 16 feet long, it's 38 inches wide. It weighs 64 pounds or 29 kilos. It has a max capacity of 915 pounds and it's primarily used for all types of paddling. The travel canoe features drop stitch construction that can be pumped to 10 PSI. Plastic bow and stern molds to cut through the water. Traditional wood and web seats. A removable rear skeg. Four floor drains. Six D-rings for securing things down. And two non-slip EVA foam deck pads. You know, I think the big reason you don't see inflatable canoes around is they're so big. Look at the size of this thing. In fact, that looks like a whole lot of pumping. I've got a solution for that. I love seeing portable boats come together for the first time. It's always, I mean, I'd seen pictures of this thing, but to see it come to life is really cool. In terms of how easy this thing was to pump up, well, it was pretty easy with the electric pump. And to be honest, if you're gonna be using this boat a lot or any large inflatable, get yourself an electric pump. It makes such a big difference. Uh, but it's very easy to assemble. There's really just three chambers. There's a floor and two sides, you blow them up. The fact that they're so big and you have to blow them up to 10 PSI, it's gonna take some time to do it by hand. You know, I love the looks of it. It really is a canoe. Who knew? But does it perform like a canoe? That's the big question. And the only way to find out is to get it on the water. Here we go. That was cool. I've been paddling for 30 years, and so I don't get to say very often that that was my first time ever paddling a new type of paddlecraft. And inflatable canoe, it, it wasn't in my repertoire, but now it is. And here's what I can tell you about the experience and the Sea Eagle Travel Canoe 16. Let's start as I always do with portability, which is highly, highly relevant for an inflatable canoe. I mean, canoes, one of the biggest drawbacks of canoes. I mean, canoes have a lot of strengths, a lot of things they're great for, but portability is not one of those things. They are big, they're cumbersome, they're hard to, to tie onto your vehicle, they are hard to get around, they're, and a lot of them, unless you spend a lot of money, can be quite heavy too. So right out of the gates, this thing came out of the back of the car and inflated in about, well, about five minutes with an electric pump. High, high marks for portability. That being said, it is important to know with this thing, I paddled this thing solo. 
Now you could easily, this is probably a better boat to paddle, like all canoes, better to paddle as a tandem with two people. You have more control over the thing, more speed. But this was pretty difficult to move around as a solo paddler, as a single person. Not only the bag, the bag, this is a 64 pound boat. Now that's not a heavy canoe, but that's a heavy bag for a single person to carry around, especially when it's not a perfectly form-fitted backpack. It's not a high-end bag that you're carrying. So it is hard to move around as one person. Two people, you could both grab a handle, much easier. Now, when the boat's ready to go, same thing for one person moving a 64 pound boat that's 16 feet long, moving around any boat of this size is not easy. And so very easy to get around, for two people, for a single person, you do need to be a stronger person. And you wouldn't want to have to, to move it a long way from the vehicle or from the vehicle to the water. So now let's talk about comfort. Now, not a whole lot to talk about here. I mean, it's a big, wide open, inflatable kayak. It's comfortable just in the amount of space you have in here. Uh, the one thing to talk about is the seat itself. I mean, this is a classic webbed canoe seat and there's three sitting positions. I have just used the single position, the solo position in the middle here. When I first saw it, I was thinking to myself, oh, this is pretty, the wood is maybe a little narrow. It's gonna be putting pressure on my hips for my, uh, perhaps not the smallest of butts, but uh, it wasn't that wasn't the case at all. Actually, it was it was just a comfortable webbed canoe seat. Nothing special. Nothing. Um, nothing to special to note on either side of it. <laughs> so, a good canoe seat. Now paddling stability. This, you know, straight up. This is the most stable canoe I've ever paddled. This is truly an impressively stable canoe, which surprised me a little bit. Uh, I thought it was gonna be stable because of the flat bottom, but because of its inflatable nature, I thought that, hey, you might be sitting higher on the water than normal canoe, and maybe it would feel a little less stable, but not at all. This was a very stable canoe. This is the type of canoe that I would say anybody can feel comfortable in. There's two types of stability to talk about. There's primary stability, which is when the boat's flat on the water, and it was very, very stable that way. And the secondary stability, the stability when the boat's on edge. And that's more uh, relevant to people who are gonna be taking it into uh, more challenging water, some current, and they wanna edge the boat, or they just uh, like to edge the boat to turn it faster and things like that. But it, it's good to know that this thing has really great secondary stability too. You put this boat on edge and it just like sits there and locks into place and you know, you don't have to worry about flipping. You're not, it's not a balancing act. So highly stable canoe. I was really impressed with that. Now, as a general rule with any paddle craft, uh, with stability, you typically give up performance. You know, the features that makes a boat stable doesn't make it travel faster, efficiently through the water. Is that the case with this boat? Yes, this is not a speed demon. I mean, it's still, it's a 16 foot canoe. So don't get me wrong, this thing moves through the water and it moves through the water quite efficiently, but compared to a canoe that has a, a keel right down the middle or a displacement hull, a, a hull that's more designed for speed, no, it, this is definitely, uh, slower than other canoes. Um, and that's the trade-off is that's often, the, it's nearly always the trade-off with portable, portable boats is you trade some performance for their portability. And that is the case here. The wonderful thing here is that you also gain some uh, surprising stability. Now let's talk features. So a few features that are worth talking about, even though there's not a ton of features, to this canoe or any <laughs> canoe for that matter. Uh, this canoe has drain holes. That's kind of neat. It, it wasn't actually so neat at the beginning when I forgot to put them on and water started coming in. But the idea that uh, you can just open those drain holes, uh, if you get swamped on the water actually, you can drain the wa water out of this canoe, that's fantastic. And the big reason that works for an inflatable canoe is because it's an inflatable. And so even if this thing gets swamped, you flip this thing, it gets full of water, it's still gonna float way higher, way higher than a normal canoe. I mean, a normal canoe doesn't 
really float when it's swamped. And so drain holes are, are useless. They're well under the water. For this thing, it wants to be on the surface. And so the water is going to be, can drain out of this thing. That's really cool. It makes it easy to drain on shore as well. If you just want to, you know, get some splash or splashes or rain out of this thing. So I like that. And that, that actually led me to talk about the, the inflatable nature of the canoe and the, one of the big benefits, which is this thing can never swamp and sink. It's, it's just one massive life jacket. Um, and so if you do ever flip, you have, even if it's completely swamped, it's still gonna ride high. You can hop back in this thing and paddle your way to shore. Very different experience than in a traditional, a normal canoe. The only other feature this canoe really has is the removable skeg. I think that's an important part of this canoe because the floor, the bottom of this canoe is so flat, that removable skeg really helps this thing track better. Without it, a little bit of wind and this thing would get blown all over the place. But uh, even still, it does get blown around a, a little bit more than a traditional canoe. You know, that's even hard to say, to be honest, because that's one of the biggest drawbacks of canoes is they get blown around so much by wind. So it's hard to, it's hard to compare. They all get blown around by wind. The, this one does as well. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. So who is the Sea Eagle travel canoe for? Well, Honestly, this is a canoe that's for anybody that wants a canoe and also wants a portable or a canoe, something that, you know, they can throw in the back of their vehicle, they can store in the closet in their apartment. That's who this is for, because this boat, you could do long trips in, you could do multi-day trips. It's got a capacity of 930 pounds. I mean, you're going to be hard pressed to go over capacity on this thing. It has tons of space for gear, just like all canoes do. It has got the stability for a beginner, but you know, maybe a highly experienced paddler who may not love this that much if they're covering distances. That's probably the only case. So last but not least, let's talk about the value of the travel canoe. Now, the travel canoe retails for $1,800 to $2,000. Now, $1,800, it's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money for a quality canoe. I mean, that's typically what you expect to pay for a quality canoe. In fact, the highest quality canoes go for about twice that. Uh, and so for $1,800, you get a quality canoe and it almost as a, a bonus, it's portable. And so it really is very good value, even though it's a lot of money. You can definitely get much cheaper canoes, but you're not gonna get the portability in more than one sense. You're not gonna get an inflatable canoe for one, something that packs up into a bag and fits in your closet, but you're also, you're gonna get a boat that's a lot harder to move around because the cheaper canoes tend to be a lot heavier and just a pain to move around. So there you go, overall, very solid value for the Sea Eagle Travel Canoe. Definitely a boat to consider. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this gear review. As always, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any experience with the Travel Canoe yourself. I only tested it for an hour and a half and so there's only so much I can learn from that. If you have a season of experience with this canoe, tell us how it performed, tell us how it lasted, tell us anything you can. Um, and we'll see you again soon for another paddling tip, paddling gear review, or paddling adventure. Bye.